All right, so today our goal is to take a look at your classroom data from your class report and think about what instructionally you can do to meet your students where they are. So we're going to use the Interpreting Your Teacher Class Report um, document that will help us through looking at that data. So for right now, you already have the class that you're working on. Go ahead and work through those questions that are on that page. And then when we're all done, we'll share out some of the things that we've written down because we'll see, I think, some commonalities between our classes. So you asked, how might this impact instruction in your classroom? Thinking about- Is that just the above or below part, or is that- Yes, yeah. Oh, so what you okay. answer with number one, how is that going to impact how you instruct your kids in that class? Right. Three and two, thirty-four. So when you're saying that, so if I was, if I'm significantly higher than the average, I should be teaching the class at a higher level. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's significantly higher? Well, well like I'm a 222 question. versus a 231 is the average norm. The norm yeah. is a 222. My class means a 231, which I would say is pretty mm -hmm. much higher. Whereas mine is versus my only three which, points above. So I would say that I'm kind of on it. Maintaining. Right. And. Um, have any of your students, number four, have any of your students scored below the 10th percentile? And what instructional strategies will be most effective with these students? Do we all have have students under? I had, not, not, I had, not in this no, particular class. I had six, but mine was the lowest class, and I co-teach during that period. So we would okay. do more like scaffolding in small groups. Okay. And that's something I was thinking about that I can do with, we're about to read um, two different types of novels mm -hmm. in my class. Okay. And are your novels, are students, I think I remember somebody saying something about... We're putting them based on, on data. Yeah. Okay. And one, the polls is a lower left side. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. So I'm going to bring you to the word scaffolding again, because I think that's a word that, um, I know I throw it out a lot, but then what do you, like, give me an example, a specific example of how you might scaffold your 10th percentile and below students versus like your whole classroom? I think it just depends. Um, but like for the <coughs> lowest, it depends on where they're at that time. Mm -hmm. I think um, if it's a higher level question, then I think it'd have to be, compared to my regular kids, have to be a different type of question. Okay. So say I have a, um, you know, analyze this um, or create this to my regular kids. And then I would say, um, give me an example of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and then try to challenge them as they like, keep on reading throughout the book. So more like, that makes like sense. a stair stepping sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Like first look at this part, and then we'll take you to the analysis, but you need to do this part first. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. So I think it just depends where they're at, because right. you know, as the year progresses, they progress. Mm -hmm. I think with the scaffolding too, you could also give, like, I'm just thinking like with a novel, mm -hmm. where you could give them like a synopsis of the book, mm -hmm. like, Here's a, or here's an excerpt from the book that kind of gives you a mm -hmm. overarching idea. Yeah. And, and then, okay, now we're gonna tackle the novel or pre-teaching that vocabulary. You might do that for everybody, but that's scaffolding of where mm -hmm. I'm gonna pre-teach this vocabulary, kind of set it up for you, and then we can mm -hmm. go in and attack it. Mm -hmm. But in this particular class, I don't have any of the tip percentile, but I definitely do in other classes. And I just, for, especially with like polls, even them, if you're watching the movie first, and so they have an overall idea of what it's about, and then right. you're like, okay, now I can actually attach my new yeah. learning to it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's utilizing the extra staff that you have mm -hmm. as well. I mean, most of the kids that are below the 10th percentile are are students that have special learning yeah. disabilities. So maybe doubling up on that BSD time mm -hmm. where you're reviewing the reading talking more about the reading where it's more done collaboratively as opposed to an independent read mm -hmm. maybe having some guiding questions that they're looking for as they read that then can be then that's where you go into your higher level right. because they have that good basic foundation of what's mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. so I think it's it's everything that was right. the government like for me on my team it's the ELL kids that are right. below the seven Right. I have that support too, you know. And we support each other too with our yeah. ideas. Well, and that's what I was just thinking about. Your PLC is such a good functioning PLC and 
as you move forward, maybe that's a goal that you guys set for your PLC is as we're working through holes, it sounds like you, you'll have students that need more support in holes. What are some things that we can do to support those questions or, have, or those students? So I have like this high level question. I still want all my kids to be able to do it. As a PLC, you guys could discuss what would be some stair step questions to get them to that question. Mm -hmm. Where do we want them to be? And yeah. Then work backwards so yeah. that we can yeah. help them out. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a great goal for you guys to to develop, to work on as you go through the spirit.